Welcome to EnrichMinds.com and to our session today on mutual funds. Now that you know about stocks and bonds, it is a good time to talk about mutual funds. In this session today, we shall learn what a mutual fund is. We shall also look at the various types of mutual funds and understand the benefits and some drawbacks of mutual funds. Let's dive in. We shall start by looking at mutual funds first. A mutual fund is a type of investment vehicle consisting of a portfolio of stocks or bonds or other securities. Mutual funds give small or individual investors access to diversified, professionally managed portfolios at a low price. Mutual funds are divided into several kinds of categories representing the kinds of securities they invest in, their investment objectives, and the type of returns they seek. Mutual funds charge an annual fee, called expense ratios, and in some cases commissions, which can negatively affect their overall returns. The overwhelming majority of money in employer-sponsored retirement plans goes into mutual funds. Let's try and understand using an analogy here. Let's say you have $20 in your pocket and you like cakes. You go to a bakery and you see that they have six types of cakes. Chocolate cake, vanilla cake, mixed fruit cake, butterscotch cake, banana cake, and red velvet cake. But with $20, you can only buy one cake. Which cake do you buy? You are in a quandary. To buy all six cakes, you need $120. But you only have $20, and the bakery will not sell slices of any cake. What's the solution here? Any guesses now? The bakery won't sell you six cakes for $20. So what can you do? One solution is for you to go and find five more people just like you who also like cakes and want to eat all six cakes. The six of you pool your money and give the bakery owner $120 for all six cakes. So now all six of you have all six cakes, and you can divide up the six cakes any way you want. You can each take one-sixth of each cake. For your $20, you got one-sixth of six different cakes, and the problem is solved. That is exactly what a mutual fund also does, but with stocks or bonds or any asset for that matter. This is exactly how mutual funds work. They pull the investments of many small investors, and then they take the entire pot of money to buy shares in many companies, say, a hundred different companies. Each individual investor could not have purchased shares in all these companies, and partial shares do not trade in the stock exchange. So the mutual fund buys shares in bulk and then assigns fractional ownership in shares of all the companies to all its investors. Here are the basic mechanics of investing in a mutual fund. Step 1. Investors buy shares in the mutual fund. Step 2. The fund pools investors' money and uses it to buy a portfolio of investments, typically stocks and bonds. Step 3. Dividends, interest, and gains are paid back to investors who can choose to reinvest them in the fund. Step 4. Investors can cash out of the mutual fund at any time. You can invest in mutual funds directly with the company that runs a particular fund, through an online broker, or through a financial advisor. If you have an individual retirement account, an IRA, or 401k, there's a good chance you already invest in mutual funds. 
Let's watch a short video courtesy of Napkin Finance. Mutual funds. Mutual funds are pooled investment vehicles. Here's how they work. A group of investors pool their money by investing in a mutual fund. The mutual fund buys a basket of investments, potentially including bonds, stocks, or money market securities. The mutual fund generates returns, which are either passed back to the investors in the form of distributions or reinvested in the fund. Mutual funds come with a range of benefits. They are generally affordable with low or moderate fees. Because they can invest in a wide range of securities, they're often well diversified. They are easy to cash out of because investors can generally withdraw their money on any day the market's open. They are professionally managed, often with one or more portfolio managers and a team of analysts and researchers. And they are well regulated, facing restrictions on what they may own and rules on required disclosures they must provide to investors. Learn more at napkinfinance.com. We shall now study the various types, advantages, and disadvantages of investing in mutual funds. Let's dive in. You can think of it this way. Picking your own stocks and bonds is a bit like cooking your own meals. You need to choose good ingredients, use some know-how in putting them together, and make sure that you're giving yourself a well-balanced diet. Investing in mutual funds is like hiring an affordable personal chef. Someone else is responsible for your meal planning and for all that legwork. But you still need to make sure you're being served a healthy diet and not being overcharged. There are mutual funds that invest in all kinds of things, including stock funds, they invest in stocks only, bond funds, they invest in bonds only, money market funds, they invest in very safe short-term debt only, balanced funds, they invest in a mix of stocks and bonds to get a balanced portfolio, target date funds, they invest in a fully diversified mix of investments which becomes more conservative as you near retirement. Another important distinction to make is between index mutual funds, which only aim to match the market's returns, and actively managed funds, which try to pick and choose the best investments in order to beat the market. Mutual funds are a popular investment option because they offer, first, professional management. By pooling money, funds can afford to hire top-notch managers. Some also have large teams of researchers and analysts. Second, diversification. Many funds own hundreds or even many hundreds of individual securities. Investors can build fully diversified portfolios with just one or two mutual funds. This lowers the overall risk of one's investments. Third, liquidity. Although you can't trade them as frequently as stocks, you can usually buy or sell fund shares on any day the market is open. Fourth, affordability. Many funds let you invest with only a few hundred or thousand dollars to start. Mutual fund fees vary, but most are much cheaper than the typical hedge fund, and the cheapest funds cost only pennies for every hundred dollars you invest. And fifth, oversight and regulation. Mutual funds must file periodic reports on their investments, report the value of what they own every day, and follow restrictions on what investments they can buy. Every investment option has at least a few downsides. When it comes to mutual funds, those include, first, fees. Even if your fund underperforms the market, you'll still have to pay management fees. Fee structures vary widely, with some mutual funds also charging sales commissions. Second, control. A professional fund manager takes the burden off of you, but 
It also means that you don't have control over the manager's decisions. And third, taxes. Depending on how long your fund has held its assets, the income you receive from a mutual fund may be taxed as ordinary income or capital gains. This can be a source of confusion because not all capital gains distributions are taxed at the capital gains rate. Unlike investing in individual stocks, the application of the capital gains tax rate has nothing to do with how long you have owned shares in the mutual fund, but rather the length of time the mutual fund has held the assets in its portfolio. Only gains from assets the fund has held for a year or more are taxed at your capital gains rate, rather than your ordinary income tax rate. Meanwhile, dividend distributions are typically taxed at the ordinary income tax rate unless they are considered qualified dividends. And like any investment with mutual funds, you aren't guaranteed good returns. You could do all the homework possible in order to pick a good mutual fund and still see its returns tank, because that's just the way investing works. Let's watch a short video on mutual funds courtesy of Investopedia. Mutual funds. How many is too many? While the diversification mutual funds offer is certainly nice, it's important to know when you have too many. For example, it may take only two mutual funds to achieve sufficient diversification. The Vanguard Total Stock Market and the Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Funds provide exposure to domestic equity and bond markets. Some would say they comprise a well-diversified portfolio. Other advisors will add mutual funds in asset classes such as alternatives, real estate, or others for full diversification. But at some point you have to wonder when adding funds stops adding value. There's no magic number, but many times different mutual funds contain the same top holdings and investment objectives. That's not diversification, and the fees they charge can be high. If your preferred asset allocation includes, say, 12 asset classes, a great start will be to obtain a mutual fund with each of those 12 classes. If you want to add more mutual funds, ask what they will bring to your portfolio. Enhanced returns, less risk. Also, understand how your advisor is compensated. Does he receive upfront load or sales charges or trailing compensation from the mutual funds? His firm might pay him more for selling certain funds over others. Holding too many mutual funds can make them difficult to monitor and evaluate. If an advisor suggests what seems like too many, ask what value they bring to your portfolio. A mutual fund pools investors' money in order to buy a diversified portfolio of securities. The benefits of mutual funds include professional management, easy diversification, comparatively low fees, and strong regulatory oversight. The downsides of mutual funds include giving up some control, no performance guarantee, and fees that you must pay even if your fund does not perform well. Most mutual funds invest in stocks and bonds. How risky a particular fund is, or how much it returns, will depend on the underlying investments it holds. Thank you for your time, and until next time then, stay enriched and strong.